Fractions are something you first learn in grade school or in elementary school. And you use them likely in your math classes, but you don't explicitly test them anymore. It's assumed you know how to work with them. And maybe that's an assumption that's that should hold, or maybe it's one that, you know, it shouldn't because we need to review it. So let's just review the basics of fractions. Uh, we need to remember their properties and particularly know how to work them by hand. I mean, you know, of course we do have a calculator, but there are certain instances where knowing how to manipulate fractions by hand and having that familiarity with it can actually help you. So what is a fraction? Let's do it pictorially first. Imagine we've got some pizza pie and it's divided into eight slices. And let's say I color in one of these slices. AKA, you know, I remove the slice or something. The question is, what fraction of the pizza is this? Well, it's one out of eight equal parts, so it's one eighth, right? And that's what a fraction is about. It's about talking about what equal part of some whole does that represent? Does that quantity or does whatever represent? So for a fraction, we've got some number over some other number, and the top number is known as the numerator, and the bottom number is known as the denominator. So you can imagine we could do, uh, you know, maybe these three pieces. So what would this be? Well, it would be three over the total number of pieces, which is eight. So you can think of this as the part that you're looking at over the whole that we're looking at. Let's look at some examples about how to actually manipulate these fractions. Now, again, you've got a calculator, but knowing how to do them by hand is just a, a useful thing to know for the SAT. So what do we do if we add three eighths plus two eighths? Well, to add fractions, if the denominators are the same, you just add the numerators and keep this old denominator. So this is going to be 5 over 8. Simple enough. How about something like 3 fourths plus 6 fourths? Don't freak out even though that 9 is greater than 4 because, again, we just add across. So we get 9 up top and we keep the bottom as 4. And that's it. Uh, what about if we have different numerators, or excuse me, different denominators? 3 eighths plus, let's say, 3 fourths. Well, here, before we can add, we need to get the lowest common denominator, the LCD. So we need to say, what do I need to change these numbers to, one or both, so that they'll be the same? Well, the easiest thing to do is just make this bottom guy an 8. So I can do that by multiplying the bottom by 2. But remember, the rules of fractions, if I multiply the bottom by 2, i got to multiply the top by 2, because that's the same thing as multiplying by 1, and I'm not really changing anything fundamental about this. So I do that, and I get 3 eighths plus 6 eighths which is 9 eighths. Uh, and of course, subtracting would work the same way. Uh, if I had, say, something like 5 eighths minus a third. Well, here, let me get a least common denominator. Well, let's see, what number could they share? Well, how about 24? So I multiply this guy by 3 over 3. I'll get 15 over 24. Multiply this guy by 8 over 8. So I would get 8 over 24. Subtract them, and I get 7 over 24. Simple enough. So speaking of simple enough, how about simplifying? Well, simplifying is just taking a fraction and reducing it down by canceling out certain factors. And we'll talk about factors later. But notice 50 over 10 is the same thing as 2 times 10 over 5 times 10. And notice that these timeses can go away because you've got a times 10 on top and a times 10 on bottom. So this is the same thing as 2 fifths. How about 64 over 100? Well, that's the same thing as 32 times 2 over... 50 times 2, so we can cancel a 2. But notice this then can be broken down into 16 times 2 over 25 times 2. And so finally we're left with, with 16 25ths. So that's just simplifying. Uh, basic uh, way of getting a uh, fraction down to a lower whole numbers. How about mixed numbers? So a mixed number, you don't really see these much on the SAT, and frankly you don't use them much in life at all. We generally prefer improper fractions or decimals, but they do come up, so good to know them. Mixed number is basically just taking a fraction and a whole number and putting them together. So if I have one and a half of something, I could write 1.5 or one and a half. So that is just, again, it's kind of archaic. We don't use it that much. But improper fractions are basically where the numerator is greater than the denominator. And these we see quite a bit, so definitely would need to know it. So how can we write this as an improper fraction? Well, remember the technique to do this was you take the uh, denominator, multiply it by this guy, and then add it to 1. So what do we get for this guy? Well, it's going to be 2 times 1 is 1. We add it to the numerator is 3, so we get 3 halves. To go the other direction, you take this guy, divide it by 2. So divide the 3 by 2, 
find your remainder, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But generally, you don't have to worry so much about it because it's all about really going in this direction. You're never really going to have to go in that direction that much. How about another example? How about um, 6 and 2 thirds? Again, 3 times two, 6 is 18. And 18 plus 2 is 20. So we get 20, and we put it over the original 3, so we get 20 thirds. Again, how about converting the other way? So what if I had something like 33 fifths? Well, 5 goes into 33 six times equally, leaving 3 left over. So we put that 3 over my 5. And we'll talk more about that with remainders. And again, not super important here, just to jog your memory. How about multiplying and dividing fractions? So these are actually pretty straightforward. What if I have something like 3 fourths times um, 4 sevenths? To get this, all you do is just multiply across. You don't have to worry about least common denominators or anything. So this would just be 12 over 28, which would reduce to 6 fourteenths, which would reduce to 3 sevenths. Okay, simple enough. Um, notice when you multiply two fractions, the answer you get is smaller than the original numbers, or at least one of the original numbers. So it's going to be smaller than uh, 3 fourths and actually smaller than 4 sevenths. It's smaller than both of them. Um, yeah, so that's just one little note. How about 3 fourths divided by 7 eighths? So to divide, the easiest thing to do is just flip this guy over, take its reciprocal. We'll have a whole video about reciprocals in a second, and multiply them. So this is the same thing as 3 fourths times 8 sevenths. And we just multiply across. We get 24 over 28, which simplifies down to 12 over 14, which again simplifies down to 6 sevenths. Notice for this one, the answer increases from the original thing we're dividing. So 6 sevenths is bigger than 3 fourths, but note it's actually smaller than 7 eighths. But that's not really a major thing. Just remember that when you multiply fractions, you get a smaller number. When you divide fractions, you get a bigger number. Finally, nested fractions. This is where you have weird things like 3 eighths divided by 1 fourths. The main thing here is just find your main dividing line. So notice this guy is the big dividing line. So that tells us how to figure this out. So there's two ways to do this. One, we could just do the multiply by the reciprocal method. So this is the same thing as 3 eighths times 4 over 1, which gets us um, uh, 3 halves. Or you can cross out and factor things out that are on the same level. So notice this 4 is on the same level as the 8, right? They're both on the bottom of their respective halves of this fraction. So I can go ahead and cancel that, make that a 2, and again, I'm left with 3 halves. That's another way to look at it. Kind of up to you which way you like. Um, what about something like A over B divided by C over A? So notice, again, this is our main dividing line. You cannot do this. You can't say, oh, an A and an A, let me cancel them. Because notice, this A is on top of its respective half. This A is on bottom. So they're not in the same half, so you can't cancel them. So if I wanted to put these together, I would probably just multiply this by the reciprocal. So I'd get A squared over BC. Can't really simplify that. And that's pretty much what you need to know for fractions.